I don't know that you're going to have the trial. But will you testify if that trial goes forward in three weeks? I would have no problem testifying. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, this is Michael Popak with the Legal AF Hot Take. You heard it here. Donald Trump has, has basically assured himself of a conviction because he's telling the world at a press conference he's going to testify, waive his Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination in the Manhattan District Attorney criminal case that starts on the 15th of April. That's a business record fraud, election fraud case arising out of his brief sexual act with Stormy Daniels and the cover-up and business record fraud that happened after that. Now, I want to look at that more carefully. I'm reasonably confident that he's not going to testify, and I'm going to try to tell you why here in a minute. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. Have I been wrong before? Sure. But let me tell you why I think that this is false bravado by Donald Trump which may work on the 25th of March or so, but doesn't work in a courtroom when it, when the chips are down in April. And then look at his track record of where he has testified and when he has it and the results. Let me short circuit it right now. Every time Donald Trump has testified in a case, he's lost and lost badly and lost worse than in cases that were similar where he didn't testify. Let me repeat that. In every case he's chosen to testify in the last several years, the result has been worse than if he had not testified. Even he has to see that him testifying doesn't make things better for him and can only make things worse. They sound good in clips like that one, but as a practicing trial lawyer, I will tell you, and I, if he was my client, which he would never be, but if he was my client, I would tell him in no, no uncertain terms, you are a fool if you testify, and you're almost guaranteeing yourself a conviction in front of this jury. You cannot say at this moment, unless you are completely insane, and we'll leave that for another hot take and another podcast, unless you're completely insane, you would never make a commitment the way he just did to the future jury that he's going to testify without seeing who is in the uh, jury box. Uh, what if it's I'll give you an example. It's not going to be. But what if it were 12 left-wing socialist Democrats in the box who all have posters of AOC in their bedroom or Bernie Sanders or Joe Biden? He's going to testify in front of them? So just to sh I just took it to the extreme quickly just to show you how ludicrous it is for him even to announce that in advance. Because if he doesn't now do it, having now having now wrote the check that he can't cash, which is par for the course for Donald Trump, in front of this future jury, what's the jury to think when he doesn't testify? And I assure you, and it's going to be, it's going to be tough because the prosecutors cannot make reference to the fact that Donald Trump is not going to ultimately take the stand if he chooses to do that. They will not be able to point to this clip and say, see, he was going to testify, but now he hasn't. So nail him. That is against the Fifth Amendment constitutional privilege against self-incrimination. You don't have to take the stand. Donald Trump, knowing that, is trying to get mileage and fundraising and grift off of, off of acting tough. I'm going to testify. We've seen this before. We've seen all of this before. And I'm going to run you through at least four examples of it and how badly it went for Donald Trump each time. In the first E. Jean Carroll case, where she sued him for rape and uh, damages as a result, he uh, did not testify. He did not testify. Jury returned a verdict of $5.5 million. But he did claim, just as he did just then, that he was going to testify. And we have a clip. Let's go to the clip. Just one day after Donald Trump's lawyer said he wasn't going to testify, Trump is now saying he wants to take the stand. I have to go back for a woman that made a false accusation about me, and I have a judge who's extremely hostile, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna confront this one. This woman is a disgrace, and it shouldn't be allowed to happen in our country. Are you gonna the former president says he will defend himself against accusations of rape from almost three decades ago, made by writer E. Jean Carroll. I'll be going back to New York. Reporters reached out to Joe Tacopina, who's Trump's attorney, and said, hey, is there any truth to it? He reportedly replied simply no. There he was in Scotland at some sort of, I don't know, golf course opening, where he said, I, I would definitely come back. I don't know what he's screaming over. I would definitely come back. I need to come back. 
But then when the chips were down, his lawyer at the time, at the time, Joe Tacopina, told the judge, Judge Lou Kaplan, federal court judge, you know who I represent, judge. I can't get him back. He says, all right, I'm going to give him one more day. He, the judge even delayed things, gave Donald Trump one more day after a, a three-week trial to come in and testify. He still didn't testify. And the jury returned a verdict against him. That's one. Then we fast forward, or kind of in that same mix, there was a multi-week trial against two of his major companies that are controlled by the Trump Organization. Let's just call them the Trump Organization for, for uh, lack of, uh, you know, just for, for uh, convenience. A jury like this one in New York, like this one, composed of 12 people like this one, with a lawyer named Susan Necklace representing Donald Trump, and she's still on the team, lost 17 counts, 17-0 against the Manhattan DA's office, same one as now, for tax fraud and other related conspiracies. Donald Trump didn't even think to testify, and didn't testify in that case, although you would think his companies are on trial for tax fraud. Maybe he would want to avoid that and have to deal with the repercussions of having to report to various lenders, investors, counterparties, insurance companies, bonding companies, and the like, accountants and auditors, that he had been, uh, his company's been convicted of tax fraud, never showed up. And the jury returned a unanimous verdict, 12-0. So we have the first E. Jean Carroll case, which was 9-0 against him, the next case, 12-0 against him. And then you have the second E. Jean Carroll case. The second E. Jean Carroll case, Donald Trump said, aha, now I'll testify. I'll finally get to say what I want to say in court. And he did. He testified. Judge Kaplan put some limits and some cabining around it to make sure he didn't leave the rails and pollute the jury's mind and prejudice the jury and get a mistrial. But he testified and the jury didn't like it. And the jury said, hmm, I and mean, this is my artist rendering of a jury, $5 million may be, not be enough here for defamation and rape of, of E. Jean Carroll. Let's, and punitive damages. Let's go to $83.5 million. Okay? Donald Trump testified. The judgment went up from $5 million with one jury to another jury, now 9-0 again if you're following at home. If you're playing the Donald Trump on trial and convictions and judgments home game, so far we're at uh, 30 and 0 in jurors ruling against Donald Trump, whether he testifies or not. And when he does testify, the number goes up. Now let's fast forward to the fourth trial I want to tell you about, the New York Attorney General case. In that one, he said he definitely wanted to testify. I'm definitely going to testify. And I might even do the closing argument or parts of the closing argument. And we were all on legal AF. Outrageous. Never happened. And Judge Angoran was like, go ahead. <laughs> That'll be interesting. You want to do your own closing? Okay, swear him in. He can do his own closing. You want to testify? Sure, you can testify. I'll listen to you um, as many times as you'd like. Donald Trump said, I'll have one helping of testimony, please, even though he was entitled to two helpings. He only testified in the adverse case brought by the New York Attorney General, not when he had the opportunity when the case returned to the defense. Okay, even he thought one helping of Donald Trump was enough. Testified. Did a little bit of his closing argument where he attacked the judge and attacked Letitia James, the New York Attorney General. And lo and behold, did it go well for him? Well, <laughs> spoiler alert, $465 million judgment later with an enhanced monitor sitting over all and, and babysitting all of your assets and being banned from um, all New York corporations and also being able to borrow money from New York subject to a stay that the appellate court just entered on some of these terms. Later, <laughs> you may not have, that may not have been a good idea for you to testify. So in the four most recent examples, let's just do an audit. Donald Trump hates audits, but let's do an audit of his trial experiences lately and how that's been going for him. So we've got, again, to recap, E. Jean Carroll didn't testify, said he was going to testify like he just did here, didn't testify, five and a half million. E. Jean Carroll, too, definitely testified. Uh, <laughs> and jury said, I hate that, 83 and a half million. Then 17 count. A trial against Donald Trump's major entities for tax fraud didn't testify conviction. And that one is a real exemplar and a comparator because same judge, same judge, by the way, I left that out. Same judge, same prosecutor, one of two of the same defense lawyers and a New York Manhattan jury 
Mm, here we go. And then you've got the New York Attorney General case was a bench trial. So you've got 30 uh, jurors who who ruled against him, whether he testified or not, and the New York Attorney General in a bench trial, a judge who ruled against him. So if you're Donald Trump, knowing what has happened, um, do you testify? Think about it for a minute. I'm trying to give you the information and the knowledge for you to help make your own decisions here. Do you come anywhere? Now, you may threaten it. You may, in a, 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 a whistling past the graveyard moment, you may suggest that you will until you won't because you can play that game. Donald Trump likes to be a free rider, right? And a free loader. And as a free rider, he can get away with these arguments because he doesn't have to pay for them. Because at the end of the day, the judge is going to protect him from himself if he decides not to take the stand. And the prosecutors can't point to the video and go, look, he was going to testify, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. But now he's not because he's a sham and he's shameful and he's a convict and a criminal and put him in jail once and for all. Can't do that. Prosecutors have to play by the book. Donald Trump never read a book. Doesn't... <laughs> It just wants to rip the, he's like a baby. He's like a baby monkey. He just wants to pull the pages out of the book and crap in his hand, throw it at the criminal justice system and see what happens. That's all we're watching in real time. And he just gets lawyers to do his bidding because let's be frank. Um, yes, everybody's entitled to a lawyer. I'm totally in favor of that. I don't care. Even the most heinous person, former Nazi in Nuremberg during the Nuremberg trials was entitled to a defense counsel. Yes. But some of these defense lawyers for Donald Trump are doing it for the almighty buck. Sorry to say it as a fellow bar member. In any event, um, so let me bottom it out. Donald Trump will threaten to testify. And you can open this time capsule up right now in March when the time comes sometime in late April or May for Donald Trump to testify. And you can say Popak was right or wrong. And if I'm wrong... <laughs> I'm a big boy. I'm a big podcast host. I will come back on and I will say, I will slap my forehead and go, holy cow, he testified because he's going to lose. The overwhelming amount of the evidence and the jury pool that's going to be picked and Donald Trump defense defenses, which are minimal, he's going to lose. He's got an overwhelming, let me talk about the trial for a minute. On the scales of justice, on the side of the, of the people, right? The Manhattan DA, right? This is law and order, real episode, okay? Same office, Manhattan DA as law and order. On one, on one side, you've got Michael Cohen is going to testify. And Michael Cohen's got some issues, but Michael Cohen on these issues will be fine when he testifies. And the jury already knows Michael Cohen from the Midas Touch Network included. Michael Cohen will testify. Alan Weisselberg will either testify truthfully or he'll go to jail for the third time. That's the disgraced former chief financial officer for Donald Trump. He'll testify against Donald Trump. So will Cohen. So will Stormy Daniels, who got the money, right, in the payoff scheme. So will executives at the Manhattan, at the, uh, sorry, the National Enquirer, who participated in the conspiracy to pay off Stormy Daniels so she didn't let the sex exploits get out and, and tank his, um, and tank his candidacy, Trump's candidacy, right? So that's going to happen. And then some lower level vice presidents that Donald Trump can barely remember the name of. I'm not kidding. He didn't know half the people that worked for his organization when he was deposed. They're going to testify against Donald Trump and Alan Weisselberg and Jeff McConney. And they're all going to be, who's the contr former controller now disgraced. They're all going to testify against Donald Trump. And the books and records and the checks that were paid and the books and records from Michael Cohen are all going to be introduced into evidence. And all these people are going to testify. And then what's Donald Trump? He doesn't have to put on a witness. He doesn't have to bring in a document. He doesn't have to bring in evidence because he's the defense, innocent until proven guilty. But you have to put on something, some defense, even if your defense is only by way of cross-examining the prosecutor's case and then turning to the jury and saying they have not met their burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It is a heightened standard. I agree. I've been on the defense side of criminal cases, state and federal. It is a higher burden. And you often, that's what you do in the defense. You push back on the prosecutor. You say they haven't met their burden. You've heard from Michael Cohen. You've heard from Alan Weiselberg. You've heard from Stormy Daniels, blah, 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 blah. But they haven't made their case. And if you should have reasonable doubt that Donald Trump was doing this for business record fraud and election interference or whatever they're going to say. And they're hoping they get one, because it has to be unanimous, one of the 12 to say, hmm, Maybe he's not guilty. We'll see. 
I doubt that happens, but I haven't put on the case. But I do know the Manhattan DA had a dress rehearsal and got a 17 count when ran the table 17-0 against Donald Trump and lawyers just like these in front of a judge, just like this one. So we'll see. And we'll follow it on Legal AF. Yes, that's what it means. <laughs> Every Wednesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time on this network on a podcast at the uh, where we pull together and curate the top five developments at the intersection of law and politics. We bring it to you with our collective anchors. And then on hot takes like this one, if you like what I'm doing here, I'll do it often. I'll do more of them. <laughs> but you have to leave me a comment and a thumbs up. It helps with the ratings, tells the algorithmic gods. It makes a sacrifice to them and says, please keep Legal AF and Michael Popak on the air. It's not an ego. It's just about what we got to do to stay <laughs> Stay on the air. We appreciate your support. I, I can't even tell you how much we appreciate your loyal following for Legal AF over the last three years since we founded it. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.